Hi there, Phil Smy again with another book review. This time he's lean, he's mean, and he's written a startup machine. Yes, Eric Rees and the Lean Startup. So this book, when it came out, this one right here, hardcover, when it came out, really changed a lot of things. I mean, I think got a lot of attention in Silicon Valley and among startup people around the world. Not startup people, but people doing startups. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about it because it's such an influential book. It's now almost five years old that the book came out and he started his blog a good few years before that as well. So I just wanted to talk about this in reflection with maybe some of the other things that I've got talking about on this channel. One of the things I think is really interesting is to relate this book to the Drucker book. And I might even do a short series about the Lean Startup and because I really see this as a continuation of Drucker's idea. Drucker, if you remember, said that business was primarily about management and that now that management kind of fell out of favor and in the you know 70s 80s and 90s everybody thought of management as being a big business thing ignoring uh, what Drucker had said before that Rees came along and said look this is uh, you know we're in the startup environment but really what startups are lacking is management so he kind of addresses that in this book and this really is a management book now his story him being Sorry, that's me trying to pick up the book. Him being Eric here, uh, his story is pretty well documented. You can go out there and find uh, lots of better inf sources about it than he, me. Um, my one thing is that he talks a lot about this company, uh, Imview, uh, IMView, however you want to pronounce it. And I actually never heard of them before. I'd heard of him, but I'd never heard of this company of his. I don't, so I don't think it's that relevant actually about the company. It's are the uh, principles that he talks about in here relevant? Now I've talked an awful lot about something. I should just get into the book. So there's five key principles in the lean startup. Principle number one is that entrepreneurs are everywhere. Entrepreneurs aren't some kind of special people who have the right stuff. They're everywhere. Principle number two is entrepreneurship is everywhere. You don't have to be in a specific place like Silicon Valley or in a specific situation to actively pursue entrepreneurship. Principle number three is that entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial companies are managed through a process called validated learning. You start your company thinking that your idea is great, but you don't really know. And this is uh, where the Lean Startup and Drucker are kind of in parallel. It's both about really understanding who your customer is and what your customer wants. And you do that through validated learning. And how do you get validated learning? Well, you go through these cycles that Rees calls the build, measure, learn loop. You go through one iteration and you learn a piece of information. And how do you learn that piece of information? By using the fifth principle, which is a unit of measurement called innovation accounting. So let's look at these things a little bit. So the first thing, of course, you have to do, of course, is come up with an idea and build a product. But before you build a product, you really should know, have some idea who your customer is. And this is uh, where kind of a, one of these key principles is to take a leap and just to act because you're never going to know everything. And what's, who's that quote from? I'm not going to look it up now that, you know, perfection is the enemy of good. What you have to do is just start have some idea of a customer and work towards that ideal customer. Then you go about measuring how your product is doing. There's some key points to measure. Um, I think everybody can do because the interesting thing is that, you know, this doesn't just apply to technology or software startups. You can use this for lots of different things. So you have three areas that you really want to look at. One is registration. Uh, we can use it in the terms of a website. Okay. How many people register on your website? second thing you can measure is activation. How many people actually even take the next step, which is using their account or logging in one more time after they do a registration. And number three is retention. How many people actively use your website? 
And you can use this for other things as well. You know, even for a car dealership or for an insurance company or for, well, you name it. So as you go through this loop, this build, measure, learn loop, how do you, we know the building, the building is you do stuff, but you measure. And the only way you can measure and then learn is if the measurements are valid and you have some kind of baseline that you're testing against. And this is, you know, uh, Reese is really big on A-B testing or, uh, you know, where you can say split testing, as we sometimes call it, where you say, okay, here's the baseline. If we do nothing, this happens. A certain group of people get this change. Does their behavior change? A certain group of people get this change. Does their behavior change versus baseline? And this is why it's really important what you measure. And, you know, these can't be vanity things. And it's really easy, especially in the web world, to get hooked on vanity things like web page hits. Hits don't mean anything. You have to have a, some kind of cause effect, cause and effect, because you can't really make any changes and see if there's a measure there. Because um, people don't know what um, website hits are. So that's where part number two about the measurement is. They have to be accessible. Everybody has to understand what it is you're measuring. A hit is not something. A person who visits your website, that's more measurable. There's a subtle difference there, right? But it's important. The third part of measurement is that it has to be auditable. And auditable means you have to be able to basically get in touch with your customers and find out whether these measurements actually mean something. Okay, so you've built your thing. You're an entrepreneur. Let's look at the five steps. You're an entrepreneur. You start up an entrepreneurial company. You're trying to go through some kind of build, measure, learn loop. And then what do you do? So you take a step back and you say, okay, is this thing really working? If your company's really working, then fine, persistence, keep on going and keep on going through build, measure, learn. But if it's not working, then you have to pivot. We don't give up in this 21st century, we just pivot. Pivoting, you can do that. There's many different kinds of pivoting. Read the book, listen to the audiobook, whatever, um, to, to look at all of them. But, you know, some of them is where you zoom in, and that is where, you, you know, you've made this thing here, but you find out that this little part of it actually is the most valuable and what people are using the most. So you zoom in and focus on that. The other way, of course, is to zoom out, where you say, okay, I've made this product, but really, there's a bigger picture that needs to be addressed. You can pivot on the customer segment. You, you were kind of targeting this group of people over here, but you find out that your product um, stays the same, but you really need to target these people over here. And then the other thing is customer need, where you stay with this group, with this segment, but you are addressing this need of theirs, but really this need of theirs is what needs help. So there's lots of other kinds of pivoting you can do, but those are some of the, the kind of the four biggies in my opinion. But your pivot has to be tested as well. You know, you need to be finding out whether what you're pivoting to is is actually better. So again, you're always measuring. You should always have metrics. He talks about metrics are people too, which is kind of a funny thing to say because they're not. But it's interesting that you have to be aware. You should be able to have a conversation with your metrics. You know, you should, metrics being things that you measure, the measurements, for those who don't know. You should be able to have a conversation with your metrics, and your metrics should say, look, this is working and this isn't working. That's why, again, measuring page hits is kind of irrelevant, because if they go up or they go down, well, what did you do? You don't really know, how, you know what was the effect? What thing did that? It's really, really hard to tell if something is so broad as uh, and undefinable as hits. Um, if you talk about registrations and you talk about uh, activations, those are a little bit easier to figure out how those things were caused. So it was a bit of a rambling one. Uh, was that a review as a lean startup? Maybe it was. It's an important book. I don't think you can really get by in this day and age without reading this book um, because everybody refers to it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do a book review on it. Uh, I think that Drucker was much more prophetic and um, actually covered a much wider uh, birth than 
than the Lean Startup does, but I think the Lean Startup is written in a very accessible way and will give you a certain viewpoint that's very popular right now. So there you have it, another book review. I hope you subscribe. There'll be subscribe buttons somewhere, and you can go to my website, which is philsmy.com, and subscribe to my newsletter on there, or read some other articles. I talk about many different things, and I'm looking forward to talking to you again. If you want to drop me a comment, of course I'll answer. Try and be nice. Okay, see ya. Thank you.